Welcome and thank you for standing by for today's conference. All participants will be in a listen-only mode until the question and answer session. At that time to ask a question, please press star 1. Today's conference is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. I would now like to turn the call over to Dan Giovina. Sir, you may begin. Thank you, Melinda. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar on U.S. federal government and California state and local export programs. My name is Dan Giovina, and I'll be your host for today's webinar. I am an international trade specialist at the U.S. Department of Commerce, U.S. Commercial Service here in San Francisco Bay Area. I'm also joined by my colleague Bobby Hines, our Senior International Trade Specialist at the Commercial Service Office in downtown Los Angeles. We have an incredible lineup of speakers today that all offer programs to help U.S. companies grow export sales. This includes um, programs from finding overseas partners, export financing, insurance, and loan programs, virtual trade missions, and the California STEP program for export funds to help grow your international sales through marketing activities. Before we begin, I wanted to go over a couple of um, items um, for the agenda. Be sure you're connected to your telephone for the audio portion of this webinar and online via this WebEx platform to view the presentations. The information can be found in the webinar reminder email we sent you on Monday. For those of you right now on the WebEx, you can see the dial-in information for the audio portion. All telephone lines will be muted for the entirety of today's webinar. The recording will be sent to all participants no later than Monday. When you receive the recorded um, webinar, at that time, let us know if you want any of the PowerPoint slides. Also, we will have a Q&A session after all the presenters um, present their webinar presentation. If you have any technical difficulties during our presentation, press star zero at any time. Okay. One second. So for today's agenda, let me go through it real quick. For those of you who can, are on, on the webinar, you can see the agenda. For those of you who just dialed in, um, today's event will begin with my colleague, Bobby Hines, who will provide an overview of the U.S. Commercial Service Programs, followed by Darlene Chu Bryant at Global SF, which is a Bay Area Economic Development Organization, Jeff Dees of the U.S. Small Business Administration, Sandra Donzella, Export-Import Bank of the U.S., and Diana Dominguez with GoBiz, State of California. Now let me pass it to my colleague, Bobby Hines, to present on the U.S. Commercial Service. Bobby, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dan, for that introduction. Hello, everyone. Our mission at the U.S. Commercial Service is to grow U.S. exports protect U.S. interests abroad, and facilitate foreign direct investment into the United States. We also enforce trade compliance and advocate on behalf of U.S. companies. We are results driven. Where we are, CS commercial service offices around the world. Domestically, we have offices in most major cities in the U.S. If you are interested in contacting us domestically or internationally, you may find us at trade.gov. That's trade.gov. <laughs> That's trade.gov. The answer to all of your questions can be found at trade.gov. Internationally, we have offices located in U.S. embassies and consulates in over 75 countries. The combination of our domestic and international trade professionals help U.S. businesses succeed in markets around the world. The current slide shows the countries where our international offices are located. The world is open for your business. Today, I would like to speak briefly about export counseling, market research, specifically the country commercial guide, and customized business matchmaking, the international partner search. 
During export counseling, we help you develop market entry and sales strategies. We can supply and help you understand export documentation, overseas import duties, and other import regulations for specific countries. Market Intelligence and the Country Commercial Guide. The Country Commercial Guide is a market research library maintained at, of course, trade.gov. The Country Commercial Guide is your roadmap to the world. Specific industries in a country are addressed. Challenges and regulations are covered. Country Commercial Guides allow you to select new markets with confidence. They contain information on market conditions, trade opportunities, and regulations. Country commercial guides are available for 125 countries. These reports are prepared by trade industry experts at our U.S. embassies worldwide and our country desk officers, mostly located in Washington, D.C. One more note on our market intelligence. 40% of U.S. exports go to countries where we have free trade agreements. Free trade agreement information can be found in our country commercial guides, of course. Complete copies or full text of all free trade agreements can be found at our Office of Textile and Apparel website. Email me for that address, or you can find our Office of Textile and Apparel using trade.gov. Business matchmaking, the international partner search. Our most successful clients are successful because they have someone on the ground in country, generally an agent or distributor. The commercial service can help you locate agents or distributors in a particular country by using our international partner search. The international partner search finds the most suitable strategic partners. You provide your marketing materials and background on your company. The U.S. Commercial Service uses its network of international contacts to interview potential partners. We then provide you with a list of up to five pre-screened companies. By working only with pre-screened companies that have expressed an interest in buying or selling your product and services, you save valuable time and money. We can also provide you with a virtual introduction. Now let me pass this back to my colleague, Dan, who can talk about our website review. Thank you, Bobby. That was a great overview. Um, as Bobby noted, you, you'll see that we're going more into virtual programs um, with the current epidemic that we have, pandemic, and um, you'll, be, you'll be seeing a lot more virtual trade shows, trade missions, and matchmaking. Um, I want to take a little time to talk about our Website Globalization Review Gap Analysis Program. It's a report that provides technical and strategic evaluation of your company's website from an international marketing and business perspective. Um, this service was created a few years ago by our e-commerce lab, which is part of the U.S. Commercial Service. The e-commerce lab provides valuable resources and videos um, and information on how to develop an effective e-commerce digital strategy. With our GAP analysis report, we help companies focus on your digital strategy, provide you with website enhancement recommendations that will keep you ahead of the curve in the 21st century digital economy. Each um, GAP report provides an executive recommendation based on what we call search engine optimization reports. We actually pulled two reports. One is called the Moz Report, and the other is the SEO Site Checkup Report. Both reports, um, you can actually compare your rankings among your top three competitors to see your search engine visibility and your domain authority, um, meaning how can people find you on online? Is it easier finding you or your competitor? So the whole purpose here is to um, use these two search engine programs to identify some 
upgrades that may be needed for your website to increase your visibility. So the SEO reports, they basically identify what we call metadata issues. Um, these are page titles and product descriptions on your website that may need to be upgraded or changed because when people um, search your pages, um, the search engine results will depend on the quality of your page titles and product descriptions. Then there's always keyword issues. You want your keywords on your page to be relevant to what people are searching so they have a better chance of finding you and your content among all the results of the search. And then thirdly, backlink issues. This is really critical. Um, backlinks are a signal to search engines that other companies or other websites can vouch for your content. So having good backlinks can have a positive effect um, your ranking and your visibility. So as part of the report, we also um, provide a website internalization best practice assessment, and we also um, can give you insight of the, the changes that can really impact your website. As we're going global now, more companies are using online platforms to make sales, and this service um, only costs $100 for small companies and it tops at 300 for large companies. Um, so what happens is you take all this information and you can either use your in-house web designer to make the changes, or we'll also provide you with a list of business service providers that you can hire to make those website changes. So I encourage all of you, um, if you have not in, um, used this program before, to contact our local office, or Bobby and I can put you in touch with the right person at your local office to get you started um, on a website review analysis. So um, thank you for that. Um, I am going to now pass it to our next speaker. Um, let me at this time introduce you to Darlene Chu Bryant, Executive Director, Global SF, which is a Bay Area Economic Development Organization. Um, Darlene, you can go ahead and um, put up your, power, your um, PowerPoint and begin your presentation. Great. Thank you so much, um, Daniel. And it's so good to see everyone today. Uh, thank you for joining us. A little bit about Global SF. Um, as Daniel mentioned, we are a Bay Area-based economic development organization. Um, and we're based in San Francisco. We are a nonprofit, and uh, what we do is we are connectors, global connectors of businesses and opportunities. Of course, we do have a vision of shaping the future of San Francisco as a global resilient city. However, our mission is uh, to work our powerful network and acumen in the global business, government, and culture. And uh, Global SF is here to help businesses thrive in San Francisco and across the globe. So we're here to help you actually regardless of where you are in the state of California. We do have three targeted, actually mandated initiatives. We are uh, partners of the city and county of San Francisco where we actually oversee Latin SF that focuses on Latin America, China SF that focuses on uh, China, and SF Asia, uh, which focuses on Asia, on the Asia and ASEAN countries outside of China. In addition to that, we also have um, Global SF Women, where we have an initiative that focuses on helping female founders and entrepreneurs, because as many of us know, female founders are not able to find uh, the resources, nor are they able to get the support um, that many other entrepreneurs uh, actually have access to. We are also a uh, SBDC affiliate center, uh, which means that we can provide services to everyone who contacts us for free. Um, of course, it's within reason, but the thing is that typically the advice that we provide to small businesses in the state of, in Northern California is actually free of charge, so do look us up. Our work, the work that we do, uh, we've actually, um, since we've started in 2008 as China SF, we've actually uh, uh, done a lot of work in terms of recruiting, even though we're also helping companies to export. Uh, we've helped to recruit over 100 companies. We've had uh, over $5 billion of uh, impact in foreign direct investment. We've helped create over 800 jobs, and we've definitely provided assistance to over 1,000 companies over the years. Um, but the thing is, the most important thing is 
what is the type of work that Global SF does to support businesses, and from an in, uh, inbound perspective, of, and whether it be inbound or outbound, of course we're here to provide an end-to-end -end concierge service to businesses seeking to grow their businesses locally or overseas. We're connecting businesses and entrepreneurs with a global network. Clearly, we work closely uh, with the commercial service. We develop partnerships and agreements with the public and private sector. So um, understanding uh, where the opportunities are and making sure that you as a business are working with the right partner, whether it be locally or overseas, to expand your business. Uh, we also plan and host industry-specific events, whether they be local uh, events in person, be pre-COVID and um, virtual now, during COVID, and we've actually been hosting delegations. In the past, of course, we've done uh, delegations every single year to travel overseas, and this year we're starting to do virtual delegations. Um, so we're working with people to make sure that the business continues. Um, how do we support exporters? Because I don't know if you know, but um, California is actually the second largest exporter for the whole United States. And our export value in 2019 was a total of $173.3 billion. Um, just as an FYI, some of the top six exports before I go to the services and why you should consider exporting, one, um, computer and electronic uh, products, two, transportation, equipment, and manufacturing. Uh, the third category is in machinery. Um, the fourth category is in different products that are manufactured in, in the state of California, including bags, for example. Uh, we also have a lot of agriculture products that are exported from California. Clearly, uh, agriculture, many people still don't know that uh, it's actually one of our biggest exports, um, as well as chemical manufacturing. We do have some of, um, uh, we do have some refineries up and down the coast of the state of California. So how, what does Global SF do to support our exporters? We actually help companies plan and be export ready. That looks at packaging, looking at shipping and logistics, looking at accounts receivable, uh, accounts receivables, because even though you have the product, the most important thing is that you can collect the money safely and make sure you do get paid for the products that you do export overseas. <clears throat> and to make sure that whatever you do, anything you say is culturally appropriate, for the destination country. We also provide access together with the, um, with the U.S. Commercial Service and our trade offices overseas, as well as working with trade offices that represent other countries locally or overseas and within our network. We introduce local companies to foreign markets. Um, we identify and join or actually uh, help companies participate in overseas expos and fairs. And we most importantly help companies understand the local markets markets and how to enter the market and find the right partners. I always say never pick the first person that says, I can do all of this for you. Spend some time, get to know them, ask questions, and do your due diligence. We, of course, try to provide as much intel as we can. Um, there's a lot of targeted market research that we can provide access to. We look and talk about customer trends and then import-export guidelines because you have to be able to export from the U.S. legally and you have to import legally so that the duties are being paid, the right permits are being acquired by the importer, um, et cetera, et cetera. And most importantly, how do we promote? We provide information and access to trade shows and delegations, as I mentioned earlier. And the thing is, for us, when we even organize our uh, delegations, we prefer to actually um, have delegations versus, um, uh, versus trade shows because uh, they actually provide, we, we actually target and provide uh, meetings um, with the importers and distributors in the target uh, and destination countries. Part of our network, I mentioned earlier, we work closely with the U.S. Commercial Service very clearly. We are partners of the Office of Economic Workforce Development in San Francisco and uh, other examples of the partners that we are that we have overseas, Enterprise Singapore, uh, the China uh, Foreign Trade Center, um, and as well as Hong Kong Trade Development Council and Malaysian Trade. We are a member of the uh, GoBiz China Trade and Investment Network. We're very proud to be there. Um, some of our opportunities, even though I did not highlight everything, we've had a couple of virtual delegations already this year, including one with Israel, uh, one with Japan. 
Um, however, last year we did have an in-person delegation that we took to uh, Singapore as well as Hong Kong. We not only created opportunities for our delegates to meet with importers, distributors, and manufacturers for those interested in uh, importing products from overseas, but the thing is we also were able to have um, and participate in networking opportunities uh, where um, our delegates were able to meet people on the ground um, in either Singapore and Hong Kong to talk about the opportunities and also to talk about the trends as well. Um, for In China, for those interested in China, as everyone, as many people know, China is one of the biggest, fastest growing export markets still to this very day. They have the uh, largest growing consumer class, um, uh, uh, consumer class, yes. Every single year, um, there is a, uh, what I, I call the Canton Trade Fair. The Canton Trade Fair takes place every fall as well as every spring. Um, this year, the, the fall show just started October 15th. It is ending this week. If you would like more information and joining, since it is virtual, please look us up. Contact us at info at globalsf.biz. Again, it's info at globalsf.biz, and we'll provide you information on how to join the delegation. Um, uh, and coming up um, this year, there is the China International Import Expo in Shanghai. Uh, it's taking place November 5th to the 10th. Um, there, there will be some in-person component to it, but the thing is the show will also be virtual. This was started about two years ago by the president of China. He wanted to focus on imports for um, their population, for their domestic market. So something to think about if you would like to um, participate and join and learn more about, let us know. We also have an upcoming uh, road show going to Japan, fall of 2021. Um, this will be food focus and actually technology focus as well. Uh, so if you would like more information or if you want more information about what other programs we have coming up where we will be able to provide opportunities and connect exporters with um, opportunities overseas, please connect us again. Um, the uh, email address is info at globalsf.biz. And, and if you want more information about, you know, what other um, types of seminars or webinars are available, we do have actually a library already of events on our website. Our website is globalsf.biz, and I will say thank you very much uh, for listening to my presentation today. Again, contact us, info at globalsf.biz, or visit our website at globalsf.biz. Thank you very much. Thank you, Darlene. That was um, that was wonderful. Great overview. I'm glad to see you're transitioning also to um, virtual platforms and some in-person aspects, which is nice. And we really, truly um, are so happy with our partnership with your organization um, over the many, many years. We've done a lot together on conferences and webinars, and look forward to engaging in some more some future export promotional activities. So thank you, Darlene. Um, Absolutely. Thank you. Next, um, please uh, let me welcome Jeff Deese, Export Finance Director, West Coast for the U.S. Small Business Administration. Jeff, there he is. I'll pass it to you. And make sure you unmute, Jeff. Make sure to unmute yourself. Thank you. Thanks for that reminder, Dan. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi, I'm Jeff Deese uh, with the uh, Small Business Administration, and I coordinate export programs that uh, SBA offers in Northern California. I've got colleagues around the state as well. So I want to give you a sense of some of the opportunities that SBA offers in connection with this. As you can tell, uh, this is really all about a partnership among multiple players, uh, and it's good to have. You want to have that full team behind you as you go into these international opportunities. There's a lot of opportunity out there. So um, let's talk a little bit about what SBA offers. And uh, as we're doing that, of course, you know, we are in this uh, time of uh, COVID disruption, but, you know, business really goes on, uh, and we've had past disruptions of our uh, economy, and exporting has proven to be a really good diversification of your risk. That's probably the main thing you uh, want to be thinking about when you're thinking about how do I survive this disruption. Be diversified. Don't be concentrated in one place. Just like when we look at the maps and they say, well, these counties can start opening up, uh, you will find that, um, oh, excuse me, thank you very much. Uh, yes, that should be all right. <clears throat> Hopefully I'm not going to lose you, actually. 
we're going to cut off my power. So I'm going to reconnect to uh, another source, and hopefully I just won't create a problem for anyone. <clears throat> anyway, um, you've got to be diversified. If you've got a second Wi-Fi, you've got to have other markets. Um, so anyway, you're going to want to be uh, connected to multiple um, market opportunities, and part of that is looking into the programs that exist. There's a lot of COVID-related relief programs that are coming out and have come out, and who knows, stay tuned, watch the headlines. There could be some additional ones flowing down. Um, even if you're not using special COVID-related ones, there actually are some particular advantages uh, of being an exporter because we have always wanted to support exporters more than any other sector because that's really, you know, the dynamic growth engine that drives the economy. And I want to introduce you to some of the SBA programs that are doing just that. Uh, okay, let me make sure before my power goes off, I'm connected to the right Internet source here just in case. Okay, let's connect there. All right, so just in case I lose you, I hopefully won't lose everything. Okay, uh, very good. Uh, so um, one final thought about exporting and before I get into the SBA programs is this right here. You know, exporting is just regular business being done at a social business, at a social distance. That's what we're learning how to do here in the United States right now, but exporters know how to do that already. So there's no, no danger and no need for worries uh, when you've got your diversified market. So let's look at um, uh, some of the opportunities from SBA. We're basically talking about loans. You need financing for your business to grow, to be successful, and we really want to help that happen. We do that not by lending directly, but rather by working for, with the people that know how to do lending. Those are banks, credit unions, uh, maybe some other non-bank uh, non commercial lenders. And uh, we do this by providing loan guarantees in connections with the loans they make. Essentially, we're providing an insurance policy for the lenders so that they will feel more comfortable doing the financing, uh, putting, putting the loans at your disposal so you can do the things you need to do. Um, and uh, we actually provide the highest level of guarantee to businesses that are exporting. So, you know, in, when times are good, uh, maybe a lender say, you know, I don't need a 90% guarantee. I'm happy with the typical guarantee that an SBA uh, program provides me for purely domestic companies. Those are at the 50 to 75% level. But if you're an exporter, or if you're just getting into exporting and you have an export plan, you may be able to qualify for a 90% guarantee. And uh, that 90% guarantee is really meaningful, particularly in these times, for, um, for lenders because Frankly, you know, they're a little concerned about their portfolios as well. So if you can come to them and say, I need financing and I'm an exporter, there's an opportunity for a 90% guarantee through SBA. That can really help you get access to capital that you need for your entire business operation. Let's explore that a little bit further. But before we do, um, I do need to let you know that SBA programs are directed specifically to small businesses. So what's a small business? Well, uh, we all know what a small business in our mind is, but SBA is given the task of defining it. So we've tried to, to drill down here, and we give two choices, you know, two ways to qualify as a small business. One is based on what kind of uh, business sector are you in by the NAICS code your business is in. And uh, you can find these here. So typically you can see they can be pretty big. If you're a manufacturer, wow, you can have 500 or more employees. If you're an agricultural producer, well, it's a little bit smaller. So depending on who you are, what kind of business you have, there's a giant table of sectors, and you can see if you're a small business. But that's a complicated way of doing it. Here's an easy way of doing it. We have a second, this second choice. And if you pass this test, you don't have to worry about the first one. And that's what we call the alternate size standard. It's very simple. Is, your, is the tangible net worth of your company $15 million or less? And if you look at your last two years, um, have you uh, averaged not more than $5 million of net income? Okay, so I'm not talking about revenue. Uh, I'm talking about net income. After all your expenses, did you clear not more than $5 million on average for the last two years? That's a pretty big company. Uh, so most companies, like more than 95% of all small businesses, 
uh, of all businesses in America are small business. So don't think you're disqualified, uh, even if you're a larger company. But if you're a small one, you're not definitely you're definitely not going to have a problem qualifying as a small business. So the three programs that I want to mention to you that are available to specifically help exporters are these: the Export Express program, a perfect multi-use program, Export Working Capital program. Uh, which is very specific and it does exactly what it says, working capital for exports, and then this international trade loan program. So that's, that's a good choice too. So let's take a little look at each of these three and what they can do for you. So the first one is Export Express, and I really like this one because it's extremely flexible. It's a loan up to half a million dollars. You can see it provides a 90% guarantee to the lender if the loan is 350 or less up to 500,000, it's a 75% guarantee still, very respectable. And what we want to do, it's, this is if you're going to the lender and say, I have some needs to develop my export activity. What is it going to be? It could be, uh, it could be I need a piece of equipment that adapts to a foreign market. It could be, uh, I need to refinance some debt to free up some capital so I can take advantage of some opportunities. It can be working capital. I need some more inventory to sell internationally. Uh, maybe you need to do Work on your website. Uh, you need to, you know, there's legal fees that you're facing because you want to do your intellectual property, get that done properly before you go international. Um, it could be, um, you know, when we start traveling again, going to trade shows, things of that nature. Uh, other kinds of marketing that you're going to need to be doing. Uh, it can also be for a standby letter of credit. That's a very interesting tool where you're going to your foreign buyer, you're a small business, you want their business, they say, I want a performance bond from you. Uh, I'll pay you in advance, but I want to. I want to. I want to make sure you can do what you can say. For a very low cost, you you can get your bank to provide a standby letter of credit, essentially as a performance bond or a bid bond, so you can get that business, and uh, that can be also financed with the Export Express program. And it can be set up. Uh, the loan can be set up as either a revolving line of credit, where you pay it and draw it. Draw it down, pay it, you know, draw it out, pay it back. Or it can be a term loan, a slug of money, and then you retire it over a period of time, 10 years for working capital. Uh, it can be longer for equipment or real estate development that you might need to do in connection with your export sales. And the thing that's cool about this is the lender gets to do all the underwriting themselves, use their own lending standards. If they're good with you, boom, this is a done deal. So that's a very nice tool for smaller loans. Okay, next program I want to talk to you about is the Export Working Capital Program, EWCP. This is for, for you big guys that land the big orders. Okay, wow, you've got a million-dollar sale, or maybe you've got multiple sales that total the millions of dollars of export business. And, you know, what? when you go to your, fine, to, to your banker, they're typically going to be really reluctant to lend against foreign sales because there's an added risk there. This provides a 90% guarantee to the lender so that they will extend you financing on your foreign sales. So they can lend against the foreign accounts receivable, uh, or they can lend on the specific transactions. You need working capital to fulfill this very big contract that you've just landed. Uh, so you want to look into that. And they can also provide the standby letters of credit I mentioned earlier. This is for bigger loans, uh, up to $5 million. And typically, you're going to be a bigger company where you're going to be sophisticated and able to provide monthly uh, uh, statements of what are your foreign accounts receivable and aging of all your foreign receivables, your current payables, and your inventory schedule. So you can show the bank what you've got going and that they can be confident that they're lending against active transactions that you'll collect to pay down the loan. All right. And then the last uh, but not least program is the International Trade Loan Program. In fact, this is probably the most commonly used of the three. It's not a revolving line of credit, it's a term loan. And it can be used for anything that's gonna improve your competitive position and increase your exporting. So whereas the first two programs I described are really predominantly to finance or exclusively to finance export-related activities, this can be a holistic loan that's helping the export side that you're developing as well as your whole company. And it can be working capital, it can be debt refinancing, um, it can be um, even business acquisitions if you're acquiring a company that's going to help you do um, some, uh, some additional exporting. That's possible now. And uh, the beauty of this is 
that, again, lenders can use their own um, preferred lending authority, their delegated authority, as long as they're getting a first lien on what, you're fin on what they're financing. Um, it's also available if you're a small business and you're really, you know, just getting to the point where banks would really consider you because, you know, banks are always going to be very conservative here. And they are uh, particularly going to be conservative if you're starting up and you're exporting both. Wow, that's a, that's a big ask for a bank. It's probably not going to be very easy to get financing. But if you've got some track record here in the U.S. and now you're expanding further, well, the bank still may be a little reluctant, particularly if you're an early stage company. There are a set of lenders uh, called Community Advantage Lenders that SBA works with. They're typically community development financial institutions, and they can make loans up to $250,000 they can use this Export Express, or excuse me, this International Trade Loan Program for that purpose if you're an exporter. Um, so that's a good tool if you're an early stage company and getting involved in exporting. All right, uh, so those are all loan programs to get you where you need to go, get the financing you need to be successful. But you'll be hearing more about this in a minute, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't miss, uh, mention SBA's role in helping <clears throat> just exploring the opportunity. And it, we do that through a grant program that uh, the federal government funds to state governments around the country it's called uh, the State Trade Expansion Pro Promotion Grant Program. These are grants made to the states. The states take these grants and then they make grants to you, the small business. Uh, and we have a great program here in California. You can see the website down here at the bottom of the slide. Uh, and you'll hear more about that from Diana Dominguez later on in this program. So I won't talk any more about it, but just say, Check it out. There are some opportunities there for some getting a little bit of incentive grant money. I've given you a lot of information. We've got a team of people in California uh, and Oregon. Uh, my colleague in Oregon is helping also in California now. Uh, so there's four of us at your service. Uh, myself, Jeff Deese, uh, you can see I look exactly like that young, handsome. Uh, now, I'm, now, I'm, uh, now I'm sheltered in COVID. Uh, COVID aged, so forgive me for that. Uh, I'll stop sharing my camera when I'm done with the presentation. But let me let me stop it right there and uh, say thank you very much. Trade.gov is great. Also, you can take a look at this sba.gov slash trade tools for some additional resources. But trade.gov, that is an awesome website. And I definitely want to uh, remind you, if Bobby didn't remind you enough times, that is the governor's, the government's export encyclopedia. So. Thank you all very much for your attention, and I really appreciate your interest. Thank you, Jeff. And you look great, Jeff, on video there, so we miss you in the office. Um, Jeff at SBA, he's a partner of ours in San Francisco, so we've worked together for many, many years helping companies. Uh, so great presentation. Um, always helpful to know um, about loan programs, the Export Express, and all the great tools and programs that SBA offers for exporters. Um, so now, let me pass it on to our next speaker. Let me welcome Sandra Donzella, Deputy Managing Director, Export-Import Bank of the U.S. Western Region. Sandra, please make sure to unmute and you can present. Thank you. Thank you, Dan, and um, thank you to all the partners for participating in today's program. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to be part of it. Um, so as Dan just mentioned, my name is Sandra Doncella. I'm a member of the Western Regional Office of the Export-Import Bank of the United States, or EXIM, as we like to call ourselves. Um, I'm based in San Diego, and together with uh, my colleagues in Irvine, Paul Duncan and Gregory Moore, we cover the um, Western states, including California, of course. Um, all of our contact information will be at the end of my presentation, uh, so I would encourage you all to give us a call as needed. Um, before getting started in terms of who we are and what we do, I wanted to point out that despite the uncertainty and the volatility that has been brought on by the pandemic, the fact remains that 95% of the world's consumers reside outside of borders. I mean, this is a very full, a very powerful um, figure, and um, it clearly shows that companies engaged in exporting 
um, can have tremendous opportunities to grow. Um, but why is it that just 1% or, in fact, I read recently it's actually less than 1% of, uh, of U.S. companies that are actually engaged in exporting? Well, we're often told that a lot of it has to do with the risk, especially the risk of non-payment, which can be a huge factor because none of it matters if you are ultimately unable to get paid. And that's when XM Bank can be a very valuable resource to help you address risk. And I'll explain that momentarily. Um, but for those of you who don't know who we are, we are a federal agency. We are America's official export credit agency. So our name is somewhat misleading. We're not a bank. We also do not offer resources to support imports into the United States. Our main mission is to support U.S. jobs by facilitating the growth of U.S. exports. So U.S. exports and U.S. jobs is really what we're about, and it's really important to us. We have a long history, 86 years. We were established right in the middle of the uh, Depression. So our programs have always been really well positioned to help in times of crisis. Um, as a federal agency, we're located, uh, our main headquarters are in Washington, D.C., which is where all of the applications are processed and credit decisions take place, but to be more accessible to the exporting community, especially small businesses. We have a network of field offices throughout the country, 12 of us, 12 offices, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm, um, I'm part of that regional office network. And we work with um, all U.S.-based companies engaged in exporting in, a, in different sectors, manufacturing, wholesale trade, services, ag, et cetera. And um, we are also able to support businesses of all sizes, small, medium, and large. But we're very proud of the very strong support that we often provide to small businesses, which consistently, year after year, Is he going to turn off the the, uh, represent the majority uh, of our businesses. In terms of um, what we do, I mentioned earlier, everything we do involves risk mitigation. Um, there's three different programs that we can provide depending on your situation and your particular needs. If you are exporting on open account credit terms or perhaps you sell on a prepayment basis but you have buyers compelling you to offer more flexible repayment terms and if you're concerned with the risk of non-payment, we can ensure your foreign receivables, and I'll explain more on that momentarily. Just like SBA, XM Bank also has a working capital guarantee program that's designed to help exporters access financing to be able to purchase or manufacture the items that will be exported. And third, if you happen to be engaged in exporting capital equipment, big ticket items, um, machinery, and you have buyers located in emerging markets that are seeking multi-year financing, we can help them access a loan, a term loan, so that they can finance the purchase of equipment from you. So again, everything we do involves risk mitigation because we're offering insurance or loan guarantees. And the intent is to help exporters um, compete, win more business, and turn export opportunities into actual real sales. And why do we do this? Well, th the reasons are obvious, but just to point out, uh, we know that the risk of non-payment uh, or lack of financing can be strong impediments to export growth, but also you should know that there's over 100 export credit agencies worldwide, so your foreign competitors have similar support. In Canada, for instance, there's the Export Development Corporation. In China, it's the Export Import Bank or the People's Republic of China. So here in the United States, it's the Export Import Bank of the U.S. or XM Bank. And in, a, in other words, we're here to, to level the playing field for you so that you can compete and win more business versus how those opportunities go to your competitors. 
Now, very quickly, because uh, Jeff already described SBA's Working Capital Guarantee Program, I just want to briefly mention that we have a very similar program. Um, in fact, it's the same name, and we offer the same um, standard guarantee where we provide 90% guarantee of repayment um, on loans that are supporting export activity. But as a temporary COVID-19 measure, I want to highlight that Exxon Bank has increased its guarantee to 95% for those lenders that wish to obtain it. Um, just like SBA, our program also supports aggressive advance rates of up to 75% for inventory, uh, export-related inventory, and up to 90% on foreign receivables. And as a COVID measure for export-related inventory, we've relaxed that now. Uh, we actually can support advances against inventory that has the potential to be exported, but not necessarily yet back by a firm purchase order. Um, and if you have a need to provide your customers abroad with uh, bid or performance bonds or down payment guarantees, just like SBA, our program also supports the issuances of standby letters of credit with only 25% collateral requirement. Um, which, by the way, does not need to be in cash versus 100% cash collateral that's typically required by the banking sector. So that's a huge benefit, especially if you are exporting equipment where this often can come up. And very quickly, I wanted to give you an example of what a borrowing base looks like since the program, both SBA and Exxon, support um, asset-based loans. So this assumes a manufacturing business that has $2 million worth of export-related assets, a million tied up in inventory, and another million tied up in foreign accounts receivable, some of which are backed by LCs. You see in the middle column the standard advance rates that most lenders will provide on, an asset, on a regular asset-based loan. But on the far right, you see what you would be able to borrow with a loan that's supported either by XM Bank or SBA's guarantee. And at the end of the day, bottom line, you can see you could more than double your ability to borrow from a bank without support. And, and this is really the main advantage of the program. Now, let me transition into Exxon insurance products because um, this is actually Exxon Bank's most demanded program, especially by small businesses. It accounts for typically over 80% of the transaction volume that we generally process in a given year. <clears throat> and it's very popular, especially now. It's become quite relevant because um, many buyers abroad are reluctant to, to pay 100% cash in advance. They may be willing to do that early on at the start of the relationship, but as it progresses, at some point, most exporters will find out that inevitably they will need insurance as buyers refuse to pay 100% cash in advance. And that's because that can be risky for them as well as size up their cash flow. So open account credit is ideally what your buyer is looking for and is what's going to help you grow your business. So let's, uh, let me quickly describe how insurance works. It's, it's essentially a very simple concept. It has to be an export sale. Um, you have to be willing to offer a buyer open account credit terms, meaning you sell the product, you ship it, the buyer gets it, and you give them a certain number of days to pay you. I would say 90% or so of the applications that we receive for insurance involve exporters offering 30 to 60 day terms, although more recently, as a result of COVID, we are seeing an increase in applications from exporters seeking 90 day terms as well. And um, what it is, is if the buyer doesn't pay, XM, you file a claim to XM Bank and we will pay either 90 or 95% of the invoiced amount. So risk protection in the event of known payment by your international customers is really the main benefit of the program. But it can be used as a sales tool because with the risk minimized, now you are better armed to be able to be more flexible on the repayment terms. 
And it does not necessarily need to be on the full sale amount. It could be on a portion of it. Um, and we can ensure repayment terms of uh, up to six months for just about any type of product, with the exception of um, products that are perishable or services, which are usually limited to no more than 60 days. And if you export bulk ag commodities uh, or equipment, we can go even longer, up to one year. The other benefit is that it can help you maximize your cash flow. So if you need financing, uh, maybe you have a regular loan, but you need to bump up your availability and include your foreign receivables in your borrowing base, um, you can, insurance can help you do that because all of our policies can be assigned to your bank so that you could borrow uh, against those foreign receivables. And most banks will lend typically up to 90% of the value of those receivables. So for instance, say you have a $100,000 export sale to a buyer in the UK, um, you're giving them two months to pay, you could borrow 90,000 essentially at shipment versus having to wait two months for the payment to come in. And in terms of what we cover, we cover a wide range of different risks in, that are categorized between commercial and political. Commercial would involve buyer insolvency or bankruptcy or situations where the buyer remains in business but they're not paying. We refer to that as protracted default. Um, that could be, for example, lack of cash flow as a result of the pandemic or due to perhaps a downturn in the buyer's economy or maybe due to the devaluation of their local currency uh, or perhaps the buyer gets purchased by another company that doesn't pay their debt uh, or maybe there's a natural disaster that impacts their operations and that's why they don't pay. And then on the political side, it's more obvious types of risks such as, such as civil unrest, riots, war, revolution, or um, government expropriation of the product, or foreign exchange restrictions, or it could be even the cancellation of an export or import license. And we offer a, an insurance policy for just about everyone, depending on your particular needs and preferences. If you are an active exporter and you have a, a somewhat of a sizable foreign portfolio and you want to insure all of it or a portion of it, we have multi-buyer options where cover is 95%. If you are somewhat new to exporting and perhaps you have a more limited international portfolio of up to 10 buyers and you want to insure a number of them, um, we will talk to you about the express policy, which also offers 95% cover, and it has become quite popular, uh, especially with smaller businesses. And then if you perhaps are an active exporter and are not too worried about a good number of your portfolio, but you have certain buyers where you're concerned with the risk, and you want to be very selective and pick and choose which buyers you want to insure, we also offer single buyer options where the cover is 90%. And um, uh, this is not in my presentation, but if you export and require letters of credit, we also have the ability to insure letters of credit uh, and cover there's 95% and the cost is minimal. I'll explain that momentarily. Um, in terms of the cost, there's no application fee. We don't charge an underwriting fee to assess the buyers, and also most of our policies have no deductible. But to give you an idea, for example, with the express policy, uh, if we're charging a premium rate of 65 basis points or 0.65%. If you have a, you know, a, a, a transaction where you're offering someone 60-day terms, say it's a $25,000 sale, it will cost you $162 to insure it. The, the cost is rather, uh, minimal and often buyers will pass this to the uh, exporters will pass this to the buyer in the invoice price. And if you happen to have a loan that's been supported by an SBA Express um, loan guarantee or um, an XM or SBA working capital guarantee, we give you a 25% discount under the multi buyer policy options. 
In terms of who's still eligible, um, we do require both the exporter and the buyer to have at least a three-year history. Um, you also, if you're an exporter, you would need to be registered with Dun & Bradstreet and have a DMV number. That's a requirement of the application. And I mentioned earlier, because our mission is to support U.S. jobs, we need to make sure that the product that's being exported was made in the U.S., and we require at least a 50% U.S. content. And that's measured at cost, so the cost of the components, the parts, and U.S. labor. U.S. labor often will bring it up substantially. Um, and we're open in just about, I think, 180 countries worldwide. Uh, but in some countries, we have certain restrictions. So knowing what our position is in a given country uh, is an important consideration. And we have a country limitation schedule posted on our home page that tells you what we can do in a given country. Um, unlike uh, our friends at SBA, XM Bank is not is prohibited from supporting exports going to military buyers or end users. That, that's part of our charter, and this little we can do about that, although some exceptions do apply. Also, um, all of our programs support export sales between independent parties. So if you have foreign subsidiaries and you're selling to them, um, those typically will not be supported by XM Bank. And also, we we are, our charter requires us to make sure that there's no adverse economic impact on the transactions that we are supporting. That rarely comes up for small businesses. It's really on the larger credits that X and Bank routinely gets engaged in. Um, so overall, we have a number of different solutions depending on your needs and where you are on your export journey. Um, but we would encourage you to call us. Uh, as needed, if you want to discuss your export financing needs or risk mitigation, and there's my contact information as well as that of my colleagues, so please feel free to reach, to, reach out to us anytime. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. That was terrific. We always appreciate the update on Exxon Bank and all your programs and um, insurance policies, et cetera. Very, very valuable for all exporters. Um, Thank terrific. You. Um, next, let me introduce our final speaker of today's webinar is Diana Dominguez. She is a Special Advisor for International Affairs and Trade at GoBiz for the State of California. Diana, I'll pass it to you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if you can hear me, Dan. Um, can yes, you hear we can me? hear you. We, we can hear you on the Perfect. phone and we can see you. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. So um, the slide deck that's actually on the screen is not the one I provided to you. I don't know if we can get the correct one up. Um, yeah, it, um, it was Adobe. We had to convert it, so it had most of the information. Okay. But, uh, it, may have, it may have taken some of it in different formats, unfortunately. Okay. This one it looks like it's being uh, presented by the California Department of Food and Agriculture. I just want to clarify that I am with the uh, Governor's Office of Business and Yeah, Business. I'll tell you what. Um, go, go, go ahead and um, just present. I'm going to see if I have um, another okay. question for you. Like that. Perfect. Okay. okay. No, that, that would be great. I just wanted to clarify and not misrepresent myself. Sure. So um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. As Dan mentioned, um, my name is Diana Dominguez. I am a Special Advisor for International Affairs and Trade focused on export development. Um, so just really quickly before I start, I want to say, uh, Dan and Bobby, thank you for helping us navigate this exporter resources conversation. Um, it's always a lot of information to take in, but I think it's all information that um, our exporters should be well aware of. Sharing these resources with our, our California businesses is a top of our priorities, um, especially as we look toward our economic recovery and resiliency, uh, we're glad to be collaborating with partners who are also committed to the same efforts. So as the world's fifth largest economy, I'm sure many of you hear that often, uh, so much of California's economic success depends on our trade and investment activity. Um, such activity accounts for 5.4 million jobs in California. That's more than one in four jobs overall. So international and trade International trade and investment plays a significant role here in California. 
Um, so, um, as as Dan's uh, bringing up, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have it up in um, two minutes. Oh, to be right there. Okay. Yeah. Well, perfect. So, going. for those of you that are new to um, my office, um, also referred to as GoBiz, we serve as the state of California's leader for job growth, economic development, and business assistance efforts. We offer a range of services to business owners, including business attraction, retention, and expansion services. We also offer no-cost consultation for tax incentive identification, site selection in case uh, you've outgrown your space or you're looking to move within the state. Uh, we also have staff on hand that can support with regulatory and permitting compliance assistance. Um, and then our team uh, can support with foreign direct investment and export assistance. So thank you, Dan. I, I see it and here. My and my apologies I... for that. I made a mistake there, so we have you up. So sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. You, okay. you can control the screen. Perfect. Do you see the – I just want to test that I can maneuver these slides here correctly. Yes. Do you see a blue yes, slide in front of you? Yep, you got it. it okay. Works. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. So. Um, the, the, our, our agency's website is business.ca.gov. We also have a separate business, dot, uh, business portal, um, which is uh, you could find at businessportal.ca.gov. Um, so let me just go on to um, zoom in specifically to our GoBiz International Affairs and Trade team here. Um, so our, our international affairs and trade team is comprised of seven staff, which include three trade representatives, uh, one that covers the Americas, another that covers Europe, the Middle East, and um, Africa, and then one that helps us cover Asia. They all sit here in California, um, but they, their, their priorities and focuses are those regions in particular. We also have a foreign direct investment specialist, and myself, an advisor for, for export development, um, as well as our senior advisor and our deputy director. So I apologize for that fuzzy picture there. I didn't realize it was so pixelated. Um, but together, we all uh, work to provide uh, foreign direct investment attraction and export assistance by way of several different programs. We also work with our lieutenant governor on foreign diplomacy. Um, let me just go to the next line. And are taking a look at how we can support with the uh, supply chain resiliency. Um, so I've indicated some, some links in there um, so that you can dive in for, for further information. Um, so I'll go on to the next slide. Um, so today I'll focus on export development and specifically highlight our export training network and also the California State Trade Expansion Program. And then uh, lastly, I'll briefly go over the Western U.S. Agricultural Trade Associations programs. Um, so let me go to the next slide. Uh, so the California Export Training Network was launched earlier this year. It's a multi-organizational partnership focused on expanding the state's exports and export training efforts. So our goal is to promote, support, and increase the number of California exporters in all regions of the state by providing export training in conjunction with stakeholder partners. Our network partners will uh, work to collabor collaboratively support our businesses and regional economies with their international aspirations. So you can visit our website for a listing of our network members and to locate resources near you. I'm happy to point out that Global SF is one of our partners in this initiative. So, Darlene, thank you for your continued work in supporting uh, California exporters. Um, so, next slide, our California State Trade Expansion Program, which is commonly referred to as STEP. Um, this is the program that Jeff Deese mentioned just moments ago. Um, so, this program is funded in part by the U.S. Small Business Administration. It is administered by us at GOBIS and also our State Department of Food and Agriculture. Um, the program works to facilitate export promotion activities that drive exports for California small businesses. So the goals are simple. If you're exporting, we'd like to help you export more. 
If you're not already exporting but are export ready, we'd like to help you get started. Um, so under this program, we create a number of opportunities to connect businesses with overseas foreign buyers. Uh, our program has a two-pronged approach. Um, the first prong is uh, participation in sales-oriented international trade shows, as well as virtual trade missions. And the second is a reimbursement stipend program designed to uh, help eligible small businesses recover up to $5,000 in international marketing costs. Let me see if I have, um, okay. So in the past, our program was heavily focused on organizing California branded pavilions at overseas trade shows, and we look forward to resuming participation in the future. But in the absence of trade shows, we have shifted our first prong um, to program support in the form of virtual trade shows and trade missions. So um, I think I, before I go on to those, I did have a slide here on eligibility. Um, this, this um, let me see here. So similar to what Jeff pointed out, um, you have to satisfy the small business size standards as outlined by SBA. Um, that link that you see on your screen is a live link, but it's based on your industry NAICS code. And depending on that NAICS code, it's, um, it'll, depending on your NAICS code, it's whether it'll, it'll measure your size based on the number of employees or your revenue. Um, so um, you're welcome to, to visit our site um, for a list of, uh, of to, to link to those eligibility standards. Um, but the other eligibility criteria here is that, you know, for the STEP program is you have to be in business for a minimum of a year. Um, you have to be organized or incorporated in the U.S. Um, you also have to be registered to do business in the state of California, and there's a link with our Secretary of State um, that, that you can just look yourself up as a company and uh, see and make sure that you're in good business standing. Um, you also have to demonstrate that you're export ready and you have sufficient resources to bear the cost to transact internationally. Um, and more recently, in the last year um, and a half, SBA has also implemented a rule that your product or service has to be uh, at least 51% or more U.S. content. So we can help you um, determine if, if you meet those um, eligibility criteria. So earlier this summer, we launched our California Global Connect program, uh, which is a series of virtual trade missions under STEP. Um, we we, GOBIS, have teamed up with Coleman Worldwide and the U.S. Commercial Service to offer California small businesses an online series of missions. These missions are taking place through the first quarter of 2021, so I apologize, my slides here are not updated. Um, the virtual missions are designed to connect our California exporters with emerging, emerging sales and infrastructure opportunities in foreign markets. So for starters, we're focusing on our our efforts in these sectors and markets noted, but we look forward to expanding in 2021. Um, participating firms do receive significant benefits from these virtual trade missions. Um, you know, so far we've hosted uh, four virtual missions, and we've worked to facilitate one-on-one -on -one virtual matchmaking meetings with pre-screened buying authorities. We've provided access to government bidding projects and international tender opportunities. And we've also helped um, participating businesses establish relationships with a global network of trade promotion professionals and more. Um, so it's, it's important to note here that GoBiz is using the funds allocated under the federal step program to subsidize participation costs for qualifying companies. Um, for those companies that do not qualify but would like to participate in these virtual missions, the cost is just under $2,000 to participate. Um, so just a quick note, this morning we wrapped up our program focused on Polish defense opportunities and opportunities with NATO. We had 25 companies um, participate and are scheduling approximately 50 one-to-one -one business meetings. Um, our next mission is taking place November 18th to the 21st, and will be focused on renewable energy and clean transportation. 
And the last virtual mission of the year will be to Bahrain, focusing on aerospace and civil aviation export opportunities. So for those that are interested in learning more about these opportunities, I'm happy to send you more information um, or get you added to our list to receive uh, information in real time. Um, so I want to go over the second prong of our STEP program, which is a popular program. It's our reimbursement stipend program. Um, eligible small businesses uh, can apply to recover up to $5,000 in reimbursements related to export marketing costs. Um, eligible reimbursements can inclu include participation in virtual trade shows, costs related to building out your web slash digital strategies. Um, this includes search engine optimization costs, uh, costs to translate your website, um, localization costs. Um, it also helps you to recover shipment of sample, uh, costs related to shipment of sample products and any fees associated with intellectual property protection. Um, so our entire STEP uh, application and website, uh, you can find at californiaexport.org. Um, the specific ICEP program is californiaexport.org forward slash ICEP. Um, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer that. It is a competitive program. Um, the application period is opening up. Um, the new round of applications, um, the period is opening up next week on or about November um, 2nd. Um, so if you're new to the program, you're, I, I suggest that you um, visit our site this week, uh, become familiar uh, so that you're ready to submit your application once it is open. Um, and lastly here, for those of you with agricultural products, I'd like to quickly highlight that the California Department of Food and Agriculture um, has, has excellent export programs. Um, they partner with the Western U U.S. Agricultural Trade Association, uh, which is also commonly referred to as USADA. Um, so they specifically offer agricultural export training programs targeted for um, ready-to-export ag businesses and for those seeking market expansion. Uh, so together with CDFA, USADA delivers um, programs and services that, that allow Western U.S. agribusinesses to compete in the export market. I'd like to briefly mention their Fund Match program. I think it's one of their popular programs. Um, eligible companies can receive up to 300,000 in marketing cost reimbursements per year. That's 300,000 in marketing cost reimbursements per year. Um, that application opens up in August and they take applications until all funds are exhausted. So for more information about that program, please visit uh, wusada.org. Um, they, their, their website is super friendly. Um, they've got videos and, and a number of different resources that walk you through what their programs um, have to offer. So I know this is quite a bit of information. If you need help navigating these resources, um, I've got my contact information up on the screen and just know that we're here to help you and point you in the right direction. Um, I also wanna point out that if you'd like to receive notifications um, from GoBiz about our activities and what we're doing, um, you're, I invite you to register for our, in, our monthly newsletter. Um, that the next one I think is scheduled to go out this afternoon or tomorrow, um, and we send it out once a month, um, just simple highlights on what's happening in our office and, and with our partners in particular related to um, export development opportunities and also highlighting, of course, our foreign direct investment attraction efforts. Uh, so with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Dan to help us um, address any Q&A. Great. Thank you, Diana. That was terrific. Um, some great resources and those virtual um, trade missions are incredible. You're really focusing on key California sectors and you're all over the world. So just an incredible opportunity for companies to continue doing business in a time where they can't travel, but making those connections online. So very valuable. Um, I'd like to ask the operator, Melinda, 
if you can open it up to um, questions from the participants, and then we will open it up to um, all of our speakers here to answer any questions that people may have. Thank you. And from the phones to ask a question, please press star 1. Please unmute your phone and record your name clearly at the prompt. To withdraw your request, please press star 2. Once again, at this time, please press star 1 to ask a question. One moment, please, for our first question. Thank you, everyone, for standing by. We're showing no phone questions. Let's give it um, one more minute. Um, and if anyone wants to send a chat question, you can do that. Um, yeah, let's give it one more minute and see if there's any questions. Thank you, everybody. And once again, as a reminder, star one for phone questions at this time. We do have a phone question from Les. Your line is open. Yes, I'm uh, just wondering. I'm uh, starting up a new division for my company that we're very interested in exporting around the world and um, don't have a lot of experience in this particular product category, but I have quite a bit of experience in various other types of products. Um, do I um, – am I qualified? For any of these uh, programs? Answer, yeah, sure, I can answer. This is Dan Juvena with the U.S. Commercial Service. Um, you definitely want to talk to Bobby Hines. I mean, you're qualified if you have a product to export, you have the experience. So as long as you have a specific product or service that is made here in the U.S. and you want to export that, Bobby would be glad to help you and connect you with our people worldwide. So I re really encourage you to um, contact Bobby Hines as the next step to see where you're at um, in terms of um, your export specific needs. Perfect. Bobby has been very helpful so far. So thank you guys very much for what you're doing. It's, it's you're very welcome. Greatly thank appreciated. You. And we have two more phone questions. Next we have Lucy. Your line is open. Hi, this is Lucy Farber. I'm from St. George Spirit. And um, I'm, my question has to do with working with Russia. We just recently got a, a large order from from um, an emporium in Moscow and St. Petersburg, and we it is shipping to Latvia, and it's paid for through Alco in Berlin, and I have not been able to get any support from XM for this because it's ultimately going to Russia, so that I was not able to get credit insurance. I was wondering whether the California STEP program would support any any kind of marketing for Russia? Sorry about that. I was on mute. Thank you for your question. So um, our step program can support uh, it. The short answer is yes. We we're not ex we don't uh, omit any country that's um, that you're allowed to to export to. Um, so yes, if you have. If you have uh, associated costs with that that transaction, I'm happy to take a look at what might be eligible um, to, and provide some guidance. And this is this is Jeff. If you can hear me, I just turned on my camera. Also, um, I, SBA doesn't have any you know any absolute prohibitions on financing transactions associated with Russia, so it might be possible that SBA could help you. Export credit insurance, though, is only available through XM Bank, so um, we wouldn't have a product there, but we might be able to support, you know, connect you with a lender that would be willing to provide some financing. It sounds like you've externalized that by using a partner in Germany, if I understood correctly, so that's a good thing, and um, so I'd be delighted to talk to you about it further. Uh, thank you. Yes, they, they, the company paid up front because we could not provide any credit insurance, so they paid in full for the first order. But as you all know, um, 
it's that it you know to encourage a relationship it's great if you can offer credit to the to the importer right right Thank yes, you. and so if if it's something, and, and maybe Sandra Donzella can talk a little bit about this, uh, if there's a way uh, to get the, the SBA or the XM credit insurance because of some external sources there, um, maybe Sandra could help you with that. Oh, you're, you're muted, Sandra. Sorry about that. The issue with XM Bank is that we have to follow the country limitation schedule. And at the moment, we are on administrative hold for any transactions involving buyers or end users in Russia. So there's not much room to get around that. And it sounds like you already tried and, and received a response from, from XM Bank in D.C. from our insurance division indicating that we will not be able to do it. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So... Uh, have you perhaps considered private sector insurance? I'm not sure if they would have that restriction. Uh, we may we may consider it in the future. It's just often our shipments are too small for the larger mm -hmm. private bank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you Thanks. know, um, please send me your contact information, and if things change and our position improves, um, we'll be happy to let you know. Okay, I will. And I will say that Rod Hirsch, who is um, on this call somewhere, has been helping us, and I am in contact with the embassy in Moscow and the trade, um, the Department of Commerce, and, and they are going to try to support the products when they arrive. So we That's are getting fantastic. some help. That's fantastic. Well, thank you for that question. Um, okay. We have time for one Telling more. Telling vodka to Russia. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for one more last question, if there is, and if um, not, we can just wrap it up. Is there one more question in queue, operator, I believe you said? We do have one last question from Robbie. Your line is open. Hey, thank you very much for taking my call. I truly appreciate this event. Dan and everybody online, thank you for hosting this. I truly appreciate it. Um, I represent Traction Labs. We have a make for x accelerator. We are export evangelists. Um, so we specialize in workshops, accelerator-like workshops, focused on product development and local market customization. So it starts with market research, business development, and product development. These are not the bureaucratic accounting and insurance services. I was wondering what sort of aid or what sort of opportunity, what sort of uh, support can I get from your esteemed institutions, right? I mean, you guys have amazing institutions and funds, but SMBs are, I often see them not able to develop products for foreign markets, right? They don't have the resources. Can you help us do this? And who should we contact? Thank you very much, everyone. Well, I would, this is Dan from the U.S. Commercial Service. Um, I would just say that, you know, you do offer a service, so I can put you in contact with our local team to just hear more about what you're trying to do and trying to export to see whether or not we can um, make some connections for you in foreign markets. But I don't know if um, Jeff or anybody wanted to um, add, add anything else to that question. Yeah, I, I would just add, um, Rob, yes, I mean, so you're providing a service, if I understand correctly. Um, and so, anyway, you know, you're, you're looking at product customization. I would think our colleagues at Commerce are excellent to let you know about what exactly are going to be all of the customizations you're going to need for a given market, then you're going to have to undertake those um, and, you know, the development costs associated with that. It is something perhaps that might be financed um, using a, 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 something like an SBA guaranteed loan, um, but you would need to be able to show, you know, not just based on projection solely, but based on the historical performance that there is repayment ability in order to, um, you know, attract the business. But that's something that definitely an SBA guarantee might help with because they'd say, well, we see you've got a profitable operation here, but now you're going into an unknown market. You're sinking a bunch of working capital into something that, you know, is not yet proven. This makes us a little bit uncomfortable at the bank. Hey, how about a 90% SBA guarantee associated with this? Maybe that could unlock some financing for you. Um, something like Export Express would be ideal for that. Um, so that's that's a thought that I have. 
And uh, adding to Jeff's comment, what I would say in terms of Exxon Bank, uh, we do have the ability to support exports of services. So if you um, are engaged in the provision of services, uh, what we would require would be that the services be performed by U.S.-based personnel. And they can be yes, performed absolutely. either here in the U.S. or abroad in the buyer's country. And the type of services that XM has done in the past, for example, involve uh, engineering services, architectural services, environmental study services, um, biracial services. So it's something we can do. What we would look for is that you have a track record of at least mm -hmm. uh, three years of revenue producing history. Um, mm -hmm. And if you need insurance, usually we can waive that if you have at least one full year and if the owners uh, or management is experienced in the industry. So we do have flexibility and we're happy to support services. So I would encourage you to give us a call and uh, or send us an email and, mm -hmm. and we can take it from there. Thank you, Diana and Jeff. We do have to wrap it up. It's 11.32, so we are ending the conference. Um, just want to remind participants, um, and again, thank you to all the presenters and all the participants, but just a reminder that on Monday, we should be forwarding you um, the recorded webinar. And at that time, if you would like to request any of the PowerPoint presentations, just let me know which ones you want, because some are very large. So if you want just one or two, let us know, and we'll get that out to you. So as I wrap it up, um, just want to encourage all exporters on the call or those thinking about exporting and all of our partners um, to really look at all these available resources that you can use and um, use these programs to help you increase your export sales. So thank you, everyone. Um, keep safe, and we look forward to helping you grow sales abroad. Thank you, everybody. We want to thank you for attending today's conference. That does conclude the call, and you may disconnect at this time.